So Jesus tells a parable against the uh, tenants of a vineyard that is so straightforward that I'm surprised he didn't begin it by saying that the tenants were actually named the Blarisees. Like, how do you not actually see what's going on here? But then again, um, maybe they didn't because they heard it and they thought, let's arrest him and kill him just like his parable said that we would. That'll show him that he's wrong. Sin makes you stupid. It defies logic. It, it breaks stuff. From the outside looking in, it almost becomes a tragedy, uh, a, a comedy in the midst of a tragedy if it wasn't for so many things being hurt down here. The priests don't want to be the tenants. They want the vineyard to be theirs. And we see it and we think, good thing they learned a lesson. Let's start over. Let's learn from their mistake. Let's build a better church than the scribes and the chief priests and the Pharisees and the Blarisees ever could. And you see the problem because, well, that's still us. It's still us in charge building the better church. That's still us trying to find something to hand over to the master when he returns. Us in charge of keeping this thing going. Us, our harvest, our works as if our faithfulness is purer than theirs. Our understanding is greater than theirs. We are what you have failed to be, even though we're just as scared and sinful. And you can measure it not only in the depth of the things that you hide behind the words, I, a poor, miserable sinner, but in the losses that we chalk up in our funerals and our stories of what used to be that has been eroded by the wages of sin, named the last great enemy, death. Because, well, we're still standing here in this vineyard pretending that it's, it's ours. We're still starting with ourselves. And even our best of our best intentions really only pave a road to the same place. Instead, start with Jesus, not yourself. The son was sent to collect something. And that's you. Really, that, that's the parable. If the vineyard is the church, we're not the workers. We're what it produces. We're, we're the fruit. And it's passive. It's beautiful. It's God's vineyard now. God wants to collect the fruit that's collected well, it's, it's, it's you. God set something up to create faith, raise you up in it, and then give you over to the Father for your life everlasting. Lent is not a season to think about how to do this more intentionally, but to focus on the thing that has already been done. Jesus was crucified for sinners. The son of the master was slain for you. The Pharisees, the Blarisees, the ones who don't understand and the ones who didn't want to. Even, even the son of man was slain for me. Even the son of man was slain for you. There is no better thing than that. That's the thing that's accomplished enough that lets us call this whole thing finished, even while we still live in the after effects that cry out to the Lord, how long? The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The kingdom of God was built upon it. And so when we talk about the tenant, the vineyards, and the fruit, it stops being learned from their mistake and starts being a thankfulness that God would come to collect you and let nothing stand in his way. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.